All right, welcome to the Frankly Fabulous Show, the Frankly Fabulous Video Diary. I want to start out by talking about Comet Bus. I was kind of in the middle of talking about this. Um, so Comet Bus, right? He makes these zines, and uh, I I saw this thing. Uh, my friend had shared, and it was like the top. It was some fan poll f- from like the '90s or something of the top zine makers, and Comet Bus was like number one. It was by gender. It was like men's favorite and women's favorite, and he was number one in men's favorite and like number three in the women's favorite. He's been doing it for a long time. He's been doing it since the '80s, right? He was in Green Day, <laughs> or I don't know if he was in Green Day. I don't know. Am I? I don't know if I'm like. A real enough motherfucker to be friends with Comet Bus, to be honest. I mean, I like this idea. And as far as I've seen, he's one of the few people that does this, where there's kind of this overlap between literature and then, I don't know, the the booking manager network of underground America DIY t- that's probably held together mostly by music, right? Bands going on tour, the network of venues, record stores, uh, uh, DIY houses, house venues, the underground in this country, to some extent, is uh, it's held together with music, I would say. I mean, uh, and it's and it's tangible. The kind of traveling, I've never really been a part of that. New York has kind of kept me centered here. Like this summer, I'm going on tour in New York, and it does feel like a little bit of a separate thing. Like if you live in like these guys I met in Wisconsin, they tour everywhere because it's like, well, if you live in Wisconsin, you've got a car, and that's where you're going to go to play. It sounds fun. I would like to do that, honestly. It would it would be cool to have a life like that for a little while. I mean, maybe not necessarily in America, although, it, you know, not that you have a choice, but it'd be cool to drive like like my buddy uh, Time Dinosaur. His friend, who's a photographer, is also a tour manager she worked as a tour manager and that's something greg turkington i think did too he was like a tour manager that's why he books neil hamburger and all these like music venues if you look at where neil hamburger typically plays they're not comedy clubs at all they're like the i don't even know the viper room or maybe not the viper room but like in columbus neil hamburger probably do ace of cups or something uh In New York, where would Neil Hamburger play? I don't even know. Um, I remember Greg Turkian telling a story about CBGB. But in any case, point being, that's one aspect of the culture in America. But it, as far as literary goes, there's chat books and there's there's definitely a network of people trading things. But for the most part, as far as I've seen, the only person's book that I find in record stores especially – I mean Comet Bus is not necessarily as much of a bookstore thing. Although I do find his like mixed review book everywhere in that book about uh, the bookstores in Berkeley. I think that's what's cool about it is it's sort of like a periodical. It's this running series. He's been doing it since the 80s. I think there's what, like 50 or 80 of them? Comet Bus zines. I guess Greg Turkington gave him the name Comet Bus. I'm not sure what the exact story is, but Greg Turkington, Neil Hamburger, started as a kind of a, you know, uh, underground music guy in San Francisco in the 80s. That's how he had uh, this Rolodex, right, of all these venues and places to book himself in distribution networks uh that's why it matters what label you get on 
I mean, in poetry, there's small press distribution. That kind of is the the go-to method to sort of get your books out there if you're kind of one of the in-group of small-time publishers. For me, looking at the way Comet Bus did it, and like like I said, the first place I think I, I they they had a lot of Comet Bus stuff in Half Price Books in Columbus, Ohio, for whatever reason on Lane Avenue. I'm not sure why. But I didn't really buy a lot of it, to be honest. I'm not sure if they had the Comet Bus Omnibus. I would love to have that book, though. But it was always cheap. And I remember seeing it at Magnolia Thunder Pussy, which is a record store. I think they have it at Used Kids. Maybe at Cafe Kerouac. But they certainly don't have it at, like, the Book Loft. Like, Comet Bus is not... Like, does Barnes & Noble have Comet Bus? I don't think so. Does... Uh, where in New York would you find it? I think, well, fucking, he owns these bookstores, right? And this is something I'm puzzled by, because Comet Bus is from the East Bay, and like I said, he's kind of a hardcore guy. At least he has that kind of edginess quality, it seems like. And yet he lives in New York. It's it's a little bit of a curious, at, at this point, New York sort of being the least interesting it's been in a long time and maybe i mean it's not the least interesting city in america but it's definitely like the safest like new york still remains interesting and fat in spite of the fact that like it doesn't really have like a danger in any way like the danger is you're gonna get canceled and lose your career or something there's no danger like you're in a you're living in a squat punk house and like double deuce or whatever the comet bus see that's what i'm saying is he comes from this background almost like swampy or something or it's like or like skaters or bmx people where they're almost like living this kind of it's it's they're tough you know they're they're it's a hardcore lifestyle <laughs> um and so i don't know exactly Maybe Comet Bus built some kind of empire. <laughs> I mean, his stuff is affordable. That's another thing I admire about it. Even though they're perfect bound books and they are they have a very unified aesthetic and they look nice, nice covers, black and white. It's like grayscale, right? But it's always nice, kind of zine. But a little bit, it's not, it's not, really crummy material it's not gonna fall apart it's it's a well-made book and it's and it's even kind of a a commercial standard in a way it's perfect bound he probably sends away to get them printed i'm not exactly sure what his situation with printing is but um but his books are like three dollars or five dollars something very reasonable in Magnolia Thunder Pussy, I'm pretty sure the book that I found was three dollars. In Double Deuce, I'm pretty sure it was five dollars. It says on the fucking cover, which is insane considering it's a perfect bound, two hundred page, and it, they're just they're fiction. They're like auto fiction in a way. Um, it's kind of s- stories from his life, episodes, dispatches from travels. It's not really a cliche. It doesn't fall into any kind of like... It's sort of Hemingway-ish or like Beat-ish in that it's just about his kind of outsider life. Not all of it. Like the one about Berkeley is all about Moe's bookstore and the guy that owned it and their kind of story. So he does different stuff. One of them, he goes on tour with Green Day... I'm not I'm not that versed in it, but I'd say he's definitely a good writer. I remember I don't remember thinking his book like being like amateurish. I, I it didn't necessarily blow me away or anything. Like I don't think he's like whatever Bologna or something. But it's cool that he's doing it and the fact that he lives and like I said he seems like the only lit guy that's that does that at least on that level he, even though he does zines they're they're literary they're 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 
sort of conscientiously trying to be like he doesn't push like he's not overly trying to be a great writer or something but I think he works hard to make it like very readable and I don't know I don't necessarily hear Comet Bus discussed that much in literary circles considering he's right here in New York and he's kind of the author of like a major literature outside of he kind of makes his own economy it seems like and I admire that I admire his distribution and and his self (laughs) agency it sort of reminds me of King Cat comics John Porcelino or various kind of comics distribution American Splendor or Crumb or Life in Hell or um, Gabriel Bell or except it's writing that's the difference he's not he doesn't make a comic I mean I love John Porcelino I love his DIY kind of like garage garage band but it's like post 80s like John Porcelino talks a lot about he's on some you know Carbondale Illinois University campus playing with his band at a house party driving you know across the midwest to play a gig and the drawings are just crummy (laughs) like he really just (laughs) does it kind of fast and he's not i mean he's got his own style let's say it's lo-fi right so i would just say aesthetically if you look at like my flyers or my books my publishing model (laughs) rotcore I would say I probably have as much in common with Comet Bus and John Porcelino. I mean, I would say they were early models. In poetry, I didn't really have a concept. I didn't even, I don't even think I really knew what a chat book was until probably 2014 or 2015 or something, really. Self publishing didn't really seem like. A legitimate thing to do um, whereas with Comet Bus it kind of made sense it was like like I said it's sort of in the mode of a it's just a guy writing about his life he's not as immediate he is sort of like it's story and it's it's composed and it's framed it's not some kind of postmodern auto fiction thing or something with transcripts or whatever. It's he's very like even though the materials and the kind of look of it is anti corporate and and low cost, uh it's t- he he makes sure to make it look good. And he was one of the first people I see I saw to use his own handwriting in his book. Even though it's just a novel, basically, double deuce. It's not you know, a font, it's it's his handwriting. I admired that. And so anyway, he owns, I think, these fucking bookstores in Brooklyn, Human Relations and um I don't know what their names are. <laughs> And Codex, I think, is one of them. I'm not sure if he owns them or if he's he. Own, I don't know how he would get money for this. He's like I said, he's like a fucking skater, uh, outsider DIY guy. So maybe somebody. I mean, he's probably famous and renowned enough at this point. Like I said, he knew the guys in Green Day, so maybe they just gave him a bunch of money to open a business or something. But. I'm pretty sure he owns these two bookstores, the one in Williamsburg, the one in kind of – it's on Flushing uh, by the Popeye's Chicken. <laughs> good, They're good bookstores, very reasonably priced. The dollar racks are always definitely worth checking out. You find some really good steals on there, no pun intended. And if you're really lucky – when you walk in, fucking Comet Bus is like working the register. One time I was at the one in Williamsburg and I go in and they're listening to Eno or something. And I thought I recognized him. I'm not 
sure from where but he's like i said he's a good looking guy he's tall he's, he's kind of like trim but like kind of muscular like he's well built and he's like he's kind of got a you know nice cut kind of face at codex the other day he had like blonde hair which i do i couldn't tell if it was him or not he wears glasses he looks like kind of a really cool like 50 year old guy like he's in a cool band and he's got that kind of weathered like life kind of look that like you know like flea or something he looks like kind of naughty knotted and like but already kind of but kind of california in a way a little bit um you can just tell there's something a little bit of different about the guy he's got like character and most of the people that work in his bookstores are like very reticent or they might have a conversation with you but they're pretty like nice about it he like is a little abrasive kind of in an old-fashioned endearing way like he's a little disagreeable so i'm in i would go into the one in williamsburg and he's listening to eno or something i'm checking out and i'm like oh i like this music and he's like oh i don't my mother employees like this crap <laughs> i'm like i like this music do you know what he was and he's do you know what it is And he's like no i don't i don't listen to this crap the other people like it i don't like this ambient stuff <laughs> And I thought it was funny, right? He's like kind of a funny, cranky dude. So I'm in there. Uh, I go into Codex on the other night because I haven't been going to bookstores very much. I've been busy and I've been kind of, you know, I just haven't been in a few weeks. Considering I'm in New York, it's like I got to I gotta get out there, you know. There's a lot to see. And it's something to do. It's part of my routine. I haven't really walked to the East Village in a couple weeks. I haven't been that far east. Uh, I've been mostly busy and going to Midtown and shit. So I thought, okay, I'll go to Mercer and I'll walk over to Codex. But they close really early. Their hours are all weird because of the pandemic. It's like they close at like fucking set. I thought at 8, but they close at 7. So anyway, I'm kind of like hurrying to get there. It's like 630 and I get there, uh, and it says on their sign, 2 to 7, right? But it's I get there, I think I get there at like 6.43 or something. So I've got a few minutes. But I notice they've already pulled their dollar racks from the outside, which are normally out front. They've already pulled them inside. So I know that they're like trying to get closed, and I was surprised they weren't already closed, frankly. But it does say on their door that they're open to 7. It is marked seven you know two to seven p.m and it's codex it's in manhattan it's on bleaker and bowery it's great it's a great bookstore it's in the back of think coffee they have a great uh z um poetry section i've actually left my zines there they really have a cool zine section and comet bus he honors that shit he understand he understands it obviously right he's a part of that network and that economy so i go in there and i leave shit from time to time easy paradise was in there I love that store. I mean, as far as far as Manhattan bookstores go, if you want to combine location, selection, price, um, overall kind of coolness, I would say it might be number one. Can because it's close to the train, it does have a great selection. The stuff is not. You can find deals, particularly on the dollar rack. They charge some ridiculous prices for some stuff. And it's also just a cool store. They do cool readings there. They're based in Brooklyn. So it's got that kind of vibe, even though it's in Manhattan. And Bleecker and Bowery, as far as location goes, you couldn't do better than that. I mean, Housing Works is a little closer to the train, but they've kind of, I don't know. I haven't been in there in a while. They've kind of changed their stuff completely. It's way different. And it's just a different vibe. It's not as well curated, right? Like Codex is kind of specifically hipster uh, kind of archivist vintage curated, right? It's Comet Bus. I don't know. The, the, the literary uh, underground kind of scene edge culture 
it's out there, but you go to these bookstores, you wish they were a little bit better interwoven. I, they are, but um, Mast is kind of far away from the train. It's expensive. That's almost like a, a collector's store. St. Mark's Books, also far from the train, even though they don't have as much good stuff, I'd say, as Codex has. Codex has a really dense and, like, well-stocked poetry section, even though stuff isn't necessarily cheap. It's not bad. Mercer Street is good, but they're very disorganized. You can tell they just don't give a shit. <laughs> That somebody stopped caring there a while ago, and you and it shows because their shit is just splayed everywhere. <laughs> um, the Strand is okay; you can find deals, but uh, it's gotten really corporate, and they've also gotten kind of overpriced on certain things. This bookstore around the corner, Passageway—they just opened. It's promising; they've got some good, but then they charge just outrageous prices for certain shit like i think the franco harris selected was like 40 dollars or something absurd it's like a it's like the a, if you know the trade paperback version it's not even like a but the guy that owns it seems kind of cool and edge edge edgy and kind of a punk dude like like comet bus so anyway i'm in codex and i go in and i've got 15 minutes i'm and so i look at the dollar racks and i see i'm you know i see the clerk and it's this tall skinny kind of cool looking guy and i sort of think you know is that comet bus i i know that codex is related to human relations i'm not exactly sure how but hey it could be i i saw a comet bus at that other bookstore and maybe it's him who fucking knows and so i'm looking and i look real fast at the dollar racks i don't see anything and he's like just and there's another guy in the store so i go back to look at the poetry and i looked i'm there for a second and comet bus he goes just so you know we close in a few minutes and i go okay thank you no problem i want i i was aware i keep checking my watch i'm literally checking my clock my phone every couple minutes because i don't want to be there past seven i'm looking at it's 646 it's 650 it's 653 so i'm looking at the poetry books i'm pretty sure the last time i looked at my watch it was 653 and Comet Bus had just said, "We're about to close," and I said, "Okay, thank you," because I didn't want to, I didn't want to overstay my welcome. I could tell he was trying to get out of there. I was just going to be quick. I just wanted to look through them real fast. Maybe I'd find something, and you know, but you can tell the guy wants to get out of there. So he walks over and he walks past me, and he's like, "Yeah, we're going to be closing uh, pretty soon." And I'm like. Uh, yeah no problem i can tell he's trying to get out of there and i'm like yeah no problem do you mind if i just look at this one last shelf real fast there's literally one shelf of books left i want to look at and he's like well you're gonna have to look at it in the dark because we're closing and he literally shuts all the lights off there's a fucking lighting panel he's he's two feet away from me he's in my personal space you know i mean <laughs> If I were somebody else, I may have thought, wow, this is really a violation of – this is kind of scary. This guy's like kind of like cornering me and he's turned the lights off. He's going to lock me in. What the fuck is going to happen? I mean I didn't care, but it was also kind of like, geez, okay. It was not 7 o'clock. It was 6.56. When I got outside, I looked at my clock. It was 6.56. So he was closing early is my point. I don't care. Like I think that's cool. Like I said, he's old-fashioned. It's his place. He owns a place. If he wants to get out of there early, it's kind of a cool neighborhood. Like I said, it's old fashioned. It's not corporate clock punch, you know, better business bureau. You have to keep these hours. It's him. That's what he wants to do. I respect it. But I was also like, well, it's supposed to be open to seven, and I I I rarely can get down there <laughs> that early. I'm I'm never leaving the house till like five or six. I eat. By the time I get to that part of town, fucking McNally Jackson closes at 7 too. And it's like I'm constantly getting there like either right after they closed or 10 minutes before they close. Strand, it was the same thing. So after Codex, I went up to the Strand and all of their fucking dollar racks – well, they're not dollar racks. They're 2 to $7 racks now. 
those had all been pulled inside. They close at eight. It's like Jesus Christ. I didn't get to look at that stuff. I didn't get to so so Comet Bus <laughs> rushed me out of his store. He was a little brusque about it. That's part of what makes him real, I guess, and kind of a character. But I'm sort of like, well, should I kind of want to interview him or something? Like, I don't know. It just feels like how many people out there know who fucking Comet Bus even is? Like, I'm surprised he's not more famous, he, considering he's right in New York. He's literally sitting <laughs> in one of these bookstores on any given day. Comet Bus is probably sitting behind the fucking counter of one of these bookstores, just like waiting for the time to pass. Maybe shooting the shit in kind of a cantankerous way with one of his customers. But I don't know. I, I think in a certain way he's an outlaw. He's published some poetry stuff. I thought about should I get Comet Bus for Easy Paradise? I mean you want to talk about a legend. Jesus Christ. There's there's not that many people that exist in that way anymore. Like the fact that he just did it himself pre-internet and existed in kind of a national – uh, stage so I don't know I'm thinking do should I try and go make friends with Comet Bus meet, meet your heroes always meet your heroes I'm not really that type of person, even though, like, I'm obsessed with and I'm constantly, like, playing in these fields that, ha that have that scene kind of infrastructure like music or, for instance, this is, like, zine stuff, right? I don't really consider what I do to be zines, to be honest. They are chat books, if you want to call them such a thing they're they're uh intermittent periodicals they're personal they're pamphlets <laughs> brochures scripture <laughs> um i like the distribution system i like the handmade distribution system and him doing everything in black and white seems like it simplifies the cost and and the aesthetic i think him being sort of less not that he's not visual i don't know if comet bus has ever done like let's say a graphic narrative thing or if he's purely it seems to me he's purely like a typeface so i can relate to that i think that has to do with kind of the simplification of his branding you know, in the parlance of our times, which is just something that happened organically, I'm sure. But I can relate to that. The Sharpie, the scanner, the black and white, the the minimal cost, the do-it-yourself. I have my printer. It's no frills. It's, it's the equivalent of what these people were doing in the 80s at, like, Kinko's, right? Xeroxing, scanning... Or Mimeo. Uh, the simplest way to get something tangible. The fact that it's on print. Like I'm not really sure what Comet Bus's web presence is. Let's check real fast. Let's see if he has an Instagram. I would say he probably doesn't. I would guess not. Like that's kind of what's cool and anachronistic in a weird way about is like he seems like he probably is pre Twitter pre uh yeah I don't see a, it's not immediately I don't see a tag for I mean there's hashtag comet bus 
but I don't see uh, necessarily a social media profile per se. Like my mom bought me a Comet Bus thing. <laughs> I'm not sure if my brother knows who Comet Bus is. Re reading is a different wavelength. It requires a different kind of effort. Music, it's easier, I think, for for those things to travel. Tapes or even merch and stuff like that. Going on tour. Doing it with literature. Uh, per particularly like like Comet Bus, it's like these. It's it's auto fiction to some degree, but like I said, it's a it's a little more composed. He's kind of old fashioned in that sense. I'm not sure. Other other than like the subject matter, I would say the content of his stories, at least like Double Deuce, right? It's about a a punk house and squatters and jumping the turnstiles and their sort of run-ins with cops and sort of that the criminal life their neighborhoods full of violence and crime and they live above a liquor store and just the reality the content of that but it's a relatively traditional uh, other than you know the other thing it being based on his life it's sort of a serial episodic retelling not unlike a Hemingway thing or a Jack Kerouac thing, but he's more composed. He's more like a lot of these punk guys. They're sort of – they work really hard to not embarrass themselves, to look cool and to look edgy and, and the right – correct – not correct but – in a in a in a cool way <laughs> um i'm i'm more of a clown i don't know uh he's not like i said he's not on well i don't know I, i'm not sure what poetry <laughs> circuit he's on does he do readings one of the results I found on this Instagram is Comet Bus at a punk poetry reading in Pensacola, Florida in the 90s or something with blonde shaved short hair. That's pretty cool. Now, like I said, he's in New York. Maybe he's at an age where he doesn't feel the need to be bumming around and sleeping on floors or whatever, but... I don't know. He seems like an affable guy. Maybe I should just go talk to him. This is this is part of what I'm working my way into with with the poetry talk show that I want to do. Uh, just like meeting the heroes, incorporating them, and 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 what could I talk about with Comet Bus? I'd like to read more of the work first. Um. But even just the 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 uh, the way that he does it and did it and there seems to be like an almost singularity, I would say. Like I said, you don't really find anybody else's books quite that spread across the country that have that kind of sense of composure the project you find people that self-publish like there's a guy in columbus that i'm kind of fascinated by who works at cafe kerouac and he kind of looks like my friend brian they look they 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 look like counterparts you know everybody in columbus kind of feels that way to people that i met later like people I knew before. It's like, oh yeah, this person looks like... So anyway, this guy's a bartender at Cafe Kerouac. And he's got a novel, I think, called Schiller Park. And it's got a nice cover. And I'm not sure what it's about. 
but I think it's about his life living in a German village, and I think it has a plot, which is kind of unfortunate, but I don't know. I'm fascinated by characters like that, you know, people that are writing books that, that have lives as writers, even in addition to their part-time blue-collar or middle-class or lower-middle-class jobs, and they self-publish or – but their books are in the bookstores and they have a literary life in towns all across America. There's people like this, the Cap City Poets Anthology with all the poets at White Castle on the cover. I, I like those kind of people and I, I romanticize that kind of character. I would like to travel around and connect with – those kind of people all throughout the country, you know, that would be kind of a fun life, like a comedian gets to, comedians get to travel around and do their shows, it would be fun to be able to do that as a, doing what I do, uh, I'm not sure if that's a component of what Comic Bus does, I'm sure he went on tour with bands and things, but, um, Printing my own work and taking it to the people <laughs> feels like the right way to do it. I mean, obviously, it, it's imp it would be important and good to have massive publishing houses do that for you as well. Like, I do want to break through and get famous to the point that I'm getting distributed by big, you know, whoever, Echo, Press, or and I'm in Barnes & Noble, and I'm in whatever – Everywhere, I want to be everywhere. I want to do a reading tour at Skylight Books and City Lights and Woodland Pattern and Tin House and all of it. Uh, Shakespeare and Company in Paris. Doing it yourself counts too, though. And so... Having examples of people like John Porcelino or Comet Bus <laughs> Well, why isn't there a poetry Comet Bus, right? Who, I mean, that, you know, to be honest, my, my books... These were definitely in influenced by Comet Bus. The way that I did it, the look, the self-contained, like I said, perfect bound. And just taking it and putting them into bookstores directly. It's like you saw that he did it. It was kind of – it's kind of magical, right? I'm in Columbus at Magnolia Thunder Post. I find Comet Bus. I'm in L.A. at – whatever that bookstore is on uh, Franklin or whatever, and I find Comet Bus. Or I'm in San Francisco, I find Comet Bus. I'm in fucking Pensacola, Florida. I want my books to pop up in the same way. Where I'd like to travel more and leave them in more places for people to find. That's why I print a lot of stuff and have a lot of different books that I make. You know, in this past year, I've made five or more kind of assorted volumes. So every time I go to an open mic, I can just pass those out. People have different work, different uh, different chapbooks, different periods of my life, different stories, different uh You know, these are more like zines. These are more like something that goes in the library. But they're also, they're pocket size. That's part of the traveling portability of it. I really am frustrated that almost none of my books are pocket sized. I'm, every day when I leave the house, I'm looking for something to take with me to read, thinking, God, why. <laughs> 
why are not more of these books made so I can put it in my back pocket so I don't have to take a bag and so I don't have to carry it. Almost none of my books fit in fit in a pants pocket. So I purposefully make my book, right? To fit that exact requirement. If you're leaving the house, if you're going to be on the train, it'll fit. <laughs> Unlike all the rest of these fucking books. They used to make more, right? Like that. The, a lot, some of the New Directions books. But... Um, see, I think Comet Bus would understand this. I think he's kind of on this wavelength. And okay, so the other thing I was thinking about was what am what are my projects sort of coming up? How am I going to organize my various enterprises and to to task man manage <laughs> task management and focusing in on my goals and targeting them and getting them accomplished. So, is this going to be usable? I'm not sure. I did want to talk about Comet Bus as sort of an aesthetic influence. I mean, even in my TV show, I would say in a weird way, one of the prime influences, I would say, are zines and comics... DIY graphic narrative things like John Porcelino and like Comet Bus. I mean, even though Comet Bus is not a graphic storyteller, the fact that he's in that kind of zine space and that handmade aesthetic, he's very much putting that forth. So that does make his work a visual art in a way, even though it's alphabetic and it's uh, liter- literary uh, it's still working kind of in this art book space it's aestheticized and it's handmade I think this is an important thing too John Porcelino as well the fact that it's kind of crummy or anti-technique, almost like Daniel Johnston, right? Some There's some music that's similar to that. A lot of the lo-fi music type stuff from Columbus kind of shares that allegiance. Just like whatever shit technology you had at your disposal, this fucking camcorder... But I mean specifically the feel of like King Cat Comics and 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 um, Comet Bus, the kind of cut and pasty Xeroxy quality. I wanted I mean my my T V show I want to feel like it has you know, like when you cut an exacto and like there's still a slip of paper on there that's like kind of jutting out and kind of a sharp I want it to be a little messy, a little bit to show its work, have rough edges, right? That's like a Comet Bus thing, I would say. Mm, I mean, like I said, his stuff is very neat. I wouldn't say it's like clean, but it's it's sharp, even though it's, it's, it's kind of a, a low-fi look or sensibility he's not really trying to be obscure it's like clear I think there's like a clarity to some degree whereas like me I want a little bit of obscurity weirdness boredom going on too long Brony, sustain. I want to. My prime focus right now is with my show is just kind of letting it breathe. I just want to transfer a somewhat truncated experience. 
I don't want it to be super clipped and super like fun size and sound bitey. I want it to be it it feels more like the experience even though it's only 28 minutes. If you if you include long takes and so I can make right I can make a 28 minute episode per day rather than per month or something. And so there's not quite as much story but you can just kind of breathe and just relax with it and it's an environmental thing. This is something I've been thinking about recently. It's just environmental the work John Ashbury said what does it say? Let me just read it. More perhaps than any of his colleagues, Berrigan has converted poetry into an environment. I think to some degree if you like portray your whole life from your point of view, it is like environmental because it's everything you're feeling, you're experiencing, you're traveling through, you're seeing the shapes around you that you're sensing. That's environmental. That's that's what you're writing for other people to uh to travel through to see how truthful it the your your rendering of the experience was and just the total detail of it and so with my walls of sound <laughs> I want to be environmental too that's why I go on so long with these videos for for one thing so I'm trying to plan these shows uh, for this summer because I already announced the summer tour <laughs> And I, you know, I kind of just like announced just a ridiculous <laughs> list of uh, venues. And so now I've got to figure out how I'm actually going to do this. I guess I should just do Washington Square Park. I should probably just man up and just start there because that's the logical place to start. I want to do Bleecker Park. I guess I should just go and do it. So either Friday, maybe tomorrow or Friday, one of these days... I'm going to do a show this week, so I should probably make a poster and things. This is sort of a dress rehearsal. I haven't been doing this as much because... I've been working on editing nonverbal episodes. That's the other thing is these things are so hyper intensely verbal and just full of so much this dialogue and description and text that I want the shows to be purposefully just completely evacuated of text as a counterpart. Like these are so dense and just thickets of explanation. So the show is empty it's just relaxed uh, this is what I will plan to do live <laughs> I suppose I'm not sure this is one reason I mean to be honest I'm a little afraid not afraid but like like all this stuff performing on the street it's like how do I even make this seem like it's an actual thing that's happening I don't know it's it's possible that I'll just go out there and like read my shit and just like no one will pay any attention to me whatsoever and I'd probably prefer it that way I don't know I'm I'd be nervous to go out and like really try to because I don't know what I'm gonna do well, am I going to do this? Well, that could sink real fast. I mean, I could read. That's probably what I'll end up doing. At least to kind of start and just kind of buoy me. I could take any damn thing and read. I could read my French book. <laughs> I could take, you know, Comet Bus. I could talk about Comet Bus for an hour. <laughs> I 
I mean, I do want to film it for the show. That's part of the purpose of doing it. Even if I don't get an audience, like, in the moment per se, I, I can still film it and put it on TV and, like, it is partially just like a performance art piece, so it will have elements of that, I suppose. Inevitably, I don't know what I don't know what's going to happen or what it's going to be, but uh, we have a few weeks to figure it out. I, I, the way I look at it is, if I can do one show a week, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll want to do more, but. If I can start just by doing one show a week, like let's say I do Washington Square this week, and then I do Prospect Park next week, and then I do Central Park, and then I do Coney Island, and then I do – or maybe maybe twice a week would be a good goal. I'm just now getting around to like actually making this a thing. I sort of announced it without a real plan. And now that it's August and we're kind of here, I'm just thinking, okay, well, my friends asked me, is there going to be a show <laughs> this weekend? I didn't know what to say. I wasn't really quite ready. I needed a little bit of a break. The poetry festival was, it wasn't this last weekend, but it was the weekend before. So like I said, I was editing a lot of stuff. I put my epic movie together, Lives of the Poets. I'm really proud of it. I think it's one of the best things yet. I really think it's great. It's a good launch. It's a good pilot for the reality show. So this can be a part of the reality show, me endeavoring to do these live shows, filming live shows, however they go, figuring out what the fuck they are. Um, they're site-specific autofiction, right? They're, they're going to be psychogeographies, and just whatever the hell I want to – like partially what I wanted to talk about today was political stuff just because we're sort of back in the throes of potential COVID insanity. I mean it's too late now. I don't want to get that into it, but this is something that could come up in the talks. They are public political speeches as much as anything sort of uh, – I, I do want to read again. I want to read this stuff again because um, I just thought I should get another take. And it's something I want to use for – and this is also kind of a rehearsal. I mean in a certain way, I guess I work from my poetry books as texts to, to you know, start from we'll, – we'll see how engaged people want to get and how engaged with people I can stand to be. I mean – as an entertainer, I think I'm terrified of people not watching and people leaving. And so, like, as a consequence, I just, uh, I can't, I can't, like, ask for the audience to lock in with me. You know, I'd rather just kind of do some weird thing that nobody's really socially approved to, like, pay attention to. Then be like, oh, everybody, come gather around. Look at look at me. I'm about to do some funny thing or some memorable superhuman, like you know, one of these guys in the park that can do some kind of crazy flip or the breakdancing guys or the jammy music bullshit, <laughs> the vibey bullshit music. I mean, I can read my poetry, and it can just be kind of nice and soothing. I think that could be maybe a nice thing to do when I'm not uh, – in, instead of like going berserk, <laughs> which is one possibility as an entertainer.
I'm certainly capable of that. It will probably be some fluctuation between those two <laughs> extremes. And hopefully we can make that interesting and make it work. The idea being it would be nice to try to do this live, but I'm not sure that a venue would go for that or take a chance on that. So, and it just do it outside. So, anyway, 721 Staycation Travel Show. 721 Staycation Travel Show. The pandemic broke time off at the handle. He's been a bad actor with some of his oil wells. On the first floor, there's a cosmetology school. Check out Bob Lazar on YouTube. 722 Trivia Night. In the volcanic winter of 1817, Governor's Island is 400 yards from Brooklyn and 800 yards from Manhattan. The past is available for pre-order now. 8-1 Booby Trap Car Vending Machines The mind is a heart, yes siree Bob. Five acres, where's the lie? The 90s belong to us, that's why we love them and resell their intellectual property in a humid centipede of automated commercialized transgurgitation. Telecasa, quasi una fantasia. Etude in black, snuggle exhilarations, laughter noons. Bravo, Columbo. You're a genius. You knew the whole time, didn't you? Overwrite them with images, lives of my characters, before you met Lily. Symbolically adopt an elephant with this adorable plush. Don't let this disappear. Strength in numbers. Chris Elliott guest stars as the priest. Crazy, sexy, cool. An audience for a view. 8-2 Amish Paradise. The smoking of the Titanic. My floor sounds like a wounded bird. Some must stand alone. A man in the park tells his friend. Mandela stood alone. Dawn, power, wash, two prescriptions. Download the free app today. It's a pocket dial. Our commitment to sustainability, human paraquat. Kostabi keeps coming up, who I'd never heard of. Like when you learn a new word and you see it five times that week, I tell my neighbor on the stoop when he says we went many months without seeing each other and now many times this week we've run into each other on the stairs out front in the mail foyer, I think it's about to thunder. Should I film that? My weather app doesn't seem to think so. Kostabi World. Making out on the phone, Picabia, Bernard, Arkimboldi, and Kostabi flying down the elevators. We share hard square mileage. Speed run Final Fantasy VII. A lot of that attention went into Mario Kart, F-Zero X. Living near the galleries opened my hair. Bartending for a living, eating cold cuts, Walking back and forth Manhattan in my uncool life. Designed after fathers. Hit the cutting room floor. Glenn O'Brien, what I learn. Smoking after dark, walking Bleecker Park. Send back all your invitations. 1-800-COLLECT to pick me up. Refining thinking with various great art. The Gildan t-shirt. Ash on my hands. Guy in Codex turned lights off on me. Think it was Comet Bus. Cassavetti's resemblance to Leonard Bernstein adds a witty layer to his being cast as a murdering orchestra conductor speeding around Hollywood Bowl in a 
Porsche, Blythe Danner for a wife, five months pregnant with Gwyneth. In one scene, he dramatically conducts a recording session to black and white footage on a soundstage playing overhead of Hitler and a sort of triumph of the will iconography. David Rifkin is a tremendous musician. Blonde trumpet angling baked potato after 10 years in NYC ready for Hollywood. Toilet seats broke off. So's the lid. Wait a minute, I'll walk you out. Eviction moratorium ends. NYU's coming back. All the children sing. My ambitious tour launches in eight minutes. Mom's under the backwards floor crying. My emotional needs are fulfilled by cathodes, plugs, screens. I remember Zelmo. Pocket convenience vineyard. Avocado mini lighter near Wisconsin, Canada. Red has a friend. It's Kevin. I can switch back at any time. Zero sounds. Swinburne, what can I do with loaf? But I go on. My emails go unrequited. I'm inflicted. A little bit of death. Not cut out for this sort of thing. The autocratic forest of trees. Altered dentist here. Warhol flowers on the wall as the camera scans past. My sex life peaked in 2013. And peaks and peaks and keeps peaking. Five minutes before they close. And on to bigger and better things. I glory in every second I'm with you. Saw Bob Holman on Bleecker and Bowery, and a few minutes later bought his book at the Strand for six dollars. We're finding the new from ten years ago, discerning a quite conventional education, get me beat up and I lose my job. Cheapskate Sky. If I could get some small roles on television, people would take me seriously. I work in your house, entertaining. A guru with this babe rubbed off. Skates eggs. Leave the room, house arrest, sacerdotal, here I come. I did take no responsibility for these moments, listening to suicide. Oh, the visions. I don't recognize any of these people. Rewatching old windows, it's snowing, in reverse, on Morgan Avenue when we lived there. Orbs hanging where they held their light. Maybe it's time in my own place. Black Miracle Go, Red Divot. First tape unlabeled, second shooting window. The way that American cities suggest the law. A zygote matrix fulfilling the need in upper tribes. Foraging gossip on outside. It's not even like that. Repairing leaves, suggesting gists. Africa Kardashian Paste Magazine, onboard wife four years ago. My dumb laugh pains me. I hate my life, but hope I keep it. Can smell my old life suddenly from this video. What is the significance of John Greenleaf Whittier? Smells like California fire. Smells like sage. Feast on dry. Maimed a pair of headphones. Hi-Fi Lyra. Dual memory. 1.07 megapixel OCD. Outstanding clarity. That's Damo howling in the other room. Cribbing old lines for hard years. Don't get me started on that. Your call implies a favorite credit card. 13 thank you compact disc was my cashier. I can decode it any time. When I have the time. Call with what you have on your mind. Your infants lift from our soundbite cleavage. Perry Como sings Christmas in Ireland, capturing the spirit of the holidays in the heart of the Irish. 13, box 1313, 10101. Frank does croce, women dancing in the aisles. Take me uptown, the main event, live at MSG. Frankly fabulous, live at Madison Square Garden, the most famous arena in the world. One of the last living alive saloon singers. A glorious arrangement by Nelson Riddle, whose chick split, grabbed all the grass, left with five gallons of muscatel. Drink up, good people. Shit, get drunk, be somebody. Brazilian girls of Ec Av C. Almost, but not quite. White columns. Thought it was an excellent piece. Taste of the center. Drinks on me. One more time or more. 
infinite my neighborhood place in flip side optimism heads i win tails you lose nelson took forever massacre massacre masquerading as democracy in the walls come tumbling down fashioning a playground of the faces i see flaneur baudelaire baudelarized a strange populace doppelganger alienation speak my mind out i see about me big things taken small a wedding in alaska a cup full of tears bar pt life cafe cafe pick me up yaffa the street the house the room sincerity wears out its coat teach me camouflage samaflange in good hands boxing ring center stage theater in the round coming up for rays of rain watch hands guiding the clock increments of simulation waste their way into existence magic in the afternoon melting in the rain a generous pleasure of financial support intro scrapbook padding as cheap gift annuity rates are wonderfully attractive secure the future of 13 for all tomorrows give the via a call anytime i have phone mail film you for my show a four cent ferry ride blue eyes forever in my heart see my friends seven six central every day hours vary on weekends my way is a stake i ate it up and spit it out peter luger shares losing market value crummy aspiration gangster romantic weathered the storms and arrows allergies and sensitivities prohibit me prohibit me from ingesting unwholesome ingredients quality is ageless applaud and treasure the main event in its entirety three pbs faces good size to the news finally get the message you are the public tomorrow is possible right now right on time there's always something on chris elliott also allison hannigan's dad on h-i-m-y-m a soda merges cane damascus urizen bagels gala night broadcast scandal of this drive the three tenors play the numbers such a perfect day don't want no other baby until they reach the edges of our icy world islands on fire the final voices took us by cannon at home and at work tapped into an advanced thinking from around the world from poughkeepsie to kipps bay cat on the field at yankee stadium is my hero full disclosure silly counters everywhere getting ready for bed need to film more inside smiling back at the capitol 8-3 silver singles dick happy explode outran the cat rob zombie went to parsons it's time to ask your doctor about key symptom not a dirty spokesperson participating law firms coming into contact with sprayed plants timed deadlines referral strike officially licensed everything he could go all the way shift focus camera wipe Tennessee Valley Authority, Marshall Van, we are pay the bills, 50% sushi, Gramercy typewriter, and he claimed me. Doug. False support, Hanneman Gold Beers, Reptar Enamel, Pain Forgets Fast, Laser Drilled Holes, in less than four to six months. My castle has leaks, thumbs, and implants. Finders people with 11th cafe tuition free You power through chronic petite park patisserie Claude Napkin injection site pain before they even start Camaro marinara Corvette pajamas buzzkill Le Mans Credit Suisse jet sur la plage New identity spindle hanky late nights 99.9% .9 of bacteria straw made of plants triage cognito used for ad decade replays sears chris berman's wallet at the don shula steakhouse stack of intensity southern new hampshire par credit how to improve for free live for free on general insurance i'm paying for you doug 
elvinr.tv, build your very own magical city, suit down, go big, barracuda provocateur, angels and kings, once a month, zaddy id, all sales final. Open house attended the Tonys, red has a front house, splendor of orange, push pops, titty fucking cast iron, Oscar Meyer Wienermobile boosting trustability credit score, the future malfunctions, tall buildings waiting in line, riding the handlebars or in the basket of a motorized city bar bike, chop the knot out of my hair, picture in my crotch, peloton crunch fitness, bulging expression to my face, St. Luke's place, bagels and locks, ludicrously contrived plot twists, her sparkling wit, Parents branch the narrative, putting space in my life. A parking emergency, whisking the boat. Hope of sapien all the years, torn to small town. Star Wars is a plot point on all these shows. Important to insecure, nerdy, central male stand-in alter-ego protagonists. Metal Gear Solid repurposes plot points and characters from John Carpenter movies. Even I knew that, watching my brother play PS1 Double Disc 1997. Clonopin steadies the sniper's nerves. One part Kate Bush, one part Cush. The newsprint comes alive. Caution tape. Biden died last monster. A time of national confusion. Wouldn't you like to know? The cousin who doesn't visit anymore. Joe Blow from Kokomo. Lives in Chicago. Everybody's competitive about where they've been, on the back of my face, pouncing ponce nez, flotation device weak. 8-4, ceasefire. This was today. This is all today. <laughs> ceasefire. Hours drain. What do we get in exchange? Women don't want my gorgeous ass. Thumbtack flossy walls, hangry in general at the world. Throwing Molotov cocktails at the Big Bear warehouse fallen into disuse. Climbing radio towers, stealing cars, driving to Kentucky or Central Park. Outrunning the cops, getting into high speed chases. How deep is your struggle for laughter? Repairing dinosaurs, I learned it getting hit hard in the face. Sex, drug, a poesy. You have destroyed the precious results of a lifetime's worth of meticulous collecting. How easy to take it easy. Headset microphone, asbestos meteorite, mink enterprises. Kastabi's brother, also Kastabi, was in White Zombie. It came from New York City. Pratt, to be exact. Parsons. I did not know that. Snowball hat, cajoling slurp, hard hat catastrophe, atmosphere. Lowell Stroll from me. Off to the races, emotional replacement, oats and honey milk soap, balled up rappers, DiBiase Seagull, deep impact, marks and length sustain, flurries, loops, flourishes, dots and commas, definitely filmed Malcolm Gladwell, hour 16,374 and counting. She unmatched me, streaming services dried up, Red was in Korea, that's why he's so tough, at the serviceman's bar. Maybe there won't be a next time. Two hairs to midnight on the doomsday clock. In the center, where after the invisible bomb went off last year, 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 80, we're already dead, and living after it feels this way. Hand cream, film tubes, the club, dreaming of a song, the possibility of a song. Bring me a steak from her business dinner at Sparks. I think a mob guy got shot there. Michael Gandolfini looks like a natural reprising his father's role as Tony Soprano in this upcoming spinoff. 2007 was a few years ago, but it seemed later than that. Watching the finale together as it premiered. Being near you startles me out of my fictions, which I don't like, as I prefer their comfort. Took pains to construct it. Thought Dunk. This is my desk, here in this light. Light snacking day is planned around dinner. 
as our weeks, my firmest organizing principle, fall back, lunch with Andre at Lucien or bar PT. Bad vibes travel through my arm to my finger out into and through the phone and screen as I send your message in self-fearing paranoia. And that brown note is Wi-Fi jiggle, shocking like a joy buzzer as it lands in your hand like a cold shoulder. August 4th and July 4th are both celebrated. We don't know which is the truest birthday of Louis Armstrong. Seven second delay, episodes faster than weeks to separate them. I intervene prosody, turnkey extreme pop sensibility, fun money, maturing auteur. Olivia Rodrigo's Disney property, upbeat current, corn derivative of shamrock marble, like sex after two years, pennies for saints, a motif of Havana, in to cheek lengthwise, WFLFMFM, station identification. Productivity crisis. Spit into a whale again. The rose so high. Load fish, a belowness, a protective limitation nearby, the collar of shore, the cufflink of you, pearl oyster bar, loading bay. Sometimes I feel like, but are you? Modest intentions, low overhead, equipmentless slight. Vanished squalor, he slept in the bus station after work. Now his family owns a lunch counter in Roanoke, Virginia. Stories absorbed, folding roll-ups, stoppings through Villier, thaumatography of utricle, utopiaizing, gun pound, waterproof aglow squadrons of the coming academies, cushion pottery stoop, taupe periginous, gravel occurring in the vertical eruptive channel. What's not good now won't be later by accident. Warlock, icicle, mining, pier, baud rate. Wager's desire. Bong resin accepts the charges, a necessary evil. Salmon, trout, whitefish, a Shropshire lad. We shan't be working together again. Toast, waiter, lady flames, allocation, footman of the altar. I have had a good life. When I have conversations, that's the script. I work in television. Can't decide what to do. All this work pouring in. Should I cut my tangle? Is it the source of my power? Think the beard pulled my chin down. New York's not New York, but I don't care. It always is. I live there. Monty Python thesaurus gets cholera on the frontiers of the possible. Shooting in a circle, I have a good life and no aim. Perry Street, Horatio, Jane, bank on it, bet. My Gen Z-ish brother, or maybe adolescent millennial, filters current lingo and memes up to me, putting it all on the line. Micro Flyer Call-In Show Being Extra Too hip for the room, proclaims Groden, Chuck's verdict. Too hip for the room. Extending the concerns of our fathers who had too much power. What am I supposed to do with my dad calibrated skill set and personality? Even self dementia already been done. When the laundry cottage buries sweet quiche ajar, waiting on ink cartridge delivery, Swedish wine nettles down. Adventure of the day. Even my walking is a hero's journey. Heroes are cornered for love and squalor. End over end the table. What else is new? Compulsive misunderstanding. Part of my eyes killing joke. Eye in chains. Look, but you better not. Don't even look at it. It can't be played, ever. Allman Brothers days. Dwayne and Greg. Dickie Betts in all their glory. Dear government, I need a billion dollar grant immediately to make all the art I need to make for the rest of my life. I have seen a better America, an America that doesn't work, including but not limited to beatnik novel movies starring poetry gods in their element, climbing mountains, and writing for TV Guide, 
KB Nemkowski will be Kramer. I will be George. Jerry will be cast against gender. We are starring in the hall. We are starring at Golf Galaxy. We are suspended in dust moat time. One month longer. W.O.R. Birthcast. Surrender Theater. Franco Prussian Lullaby. Phantasm Emphatic. East Side, West Side. All around the town. I remain unconvinced. Okay, and then I'll read a selection of these motherfuckers. He never saw my career. He never saw my career. 719, cold feet. When, boy, when are you gonna get your act together? Get back in positions, assholes. Obscenity is language filth. Remain unsanitary. Throwing time away. Lone Depot. Lone Depot. By your side. Give us a call. TV's how I keep an eye on the U.S. Take your pick. 720. Lifescape. Being a student of New York City, a playwright is just a poet who's an actor. Fried coffee is in the tap. I've got a lot of unblocking to do. Throwing good money after bad. The 21st century milkshake, Silverado, smoking the pink cigar. 721, Backdraft. Why do people on boats always wave to each other? My curse is my sexual thirst. Are we migrating to an after party? Do you need help? Let's mix it in with the budget. Why not? Fool around, wait around, wait for a unit of coffee. Gotta go. Couple minutes loaded. Keep up the good work. In a collapsed lung, I found Monster on Craigslist. Rock and roll lawyers do come true. That one's for Meatloaf. 722, Physical Year. Living in the future costs a lot of money. The past doesn't matter at all. New York City is the motherboard, never-ending art film of my life. 723 Alphaville. The sun is out and it's raining. I know I've got ugly clothes. This is what capitalism did to me. Seven twenty four cash only. My computer has an ice cream headache. How to take a walk. The twenty first century is so Rococo. Seven twenty five free speech. Greg picks up a scrap of bark. Papyrus, he says. I've got feelings for the truth clown. Everybody's still in shock. Brendan Lorber asked me to sign my books. 
We traded one of his for all five zines I made this year, one for each season. 726, vehicular now. When I turned around, she'd turned into a tree. Fashion repair. Sandwich fairy. Watch this space. Seven twenty eight Niagara forgery. Ten years weighs us all down on earth as it is in heaven. Flare moves, you know who. Big haircut. First to Sisyphus. Pilgrimage to Horatio, Street of Poets, eighty one twenty six in another country. Seven twenty nine altered beast hot wiring autonomous weapons systems seven thirty first come first served met museum site of my greatest poem. I remember when I wrote the pickup artists. This line is for Alice Neal. Jenga, demon drop, stack of chips, memory stick, stopping by the pro shop, all in, ramble on. 7.31, Carvana. The pandemic is a cocoon. She goes home with the night. I'm sorry that didn't fit in with your narrative. Smoking a joint in front of the sonnets. Dag. Felt put upon lizard desire. Last of a dying breed. Have this film studio in my pockets. Six white horses on NYPD elevators. I'd really rather sit outside. They're generally very nice people. We're hilling downward. I used it out. There's no money in the bargain. Stop losses. Computer doorways. Fairly used rugs. I see them all the time. God damn it, I knew that would happen. Are they open like every minute? Lost stopover. It was a personal hassle. Everyone's in a location. Cruising USA. Watching a small town get murdered. Centipede hotline, motorcycle testicles, administer last exploit. Would you like to read the article before sharing it? Drop a pin. Blood tap, Peebo Bryson. Eight three Skeletor. A flower fell into my salad, but I can't tell where. Spit out of a whale. I had a vision which was Topher Grace discussing Mallarmé on that 70s show. So I will make a sitcom that is all about literature and, most importantly, poetry. These mint condition sky lilacs beat me up, tucker themselves out, throwing themselves off a tree at me. I'm not even supposed to be here. Need to message Greg. Need to message Eli. He's probably on vacation. Need to write a script. Targus, Pegasus. Big plans take time. Do I have any? Five to six months. Monty's Trattoria. JR's Pizza and Brew. Peculiar Pub. Berlin, Berlin Donor. Steel Trap, you're making me uncomfortable. Tekken Monkey Drinking. Morton Street Breakdown. Pouring hot scalding end of day. House of Funds, Northern Exposure, a gazebo stream of consciousness. Zsa 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 Gabors. Zsa Zsa Gabors. Wait until I get a glass lasso. Illustrious home of PAP, public access poetry, Glenn O'Brien's TV party, 
Jake Fogelnest, Andy Milanakis, Chris Gethard, and countless others, now including me. I pan down, your dress the pink of the sky. I was staring at the camo, immediate eye dialogue, fail to write good press. Best little table in the city, this Chad right here. Friends talk show as I film them, that's us hanging out. They literally can't have me removed. War distraction out of context. Have the hots for renegade fear adoption. Keep it dibs on my habs. Goalie magnolia. Blizzard creep pop. I'm eating your clothes right now, but I don't want to. Wild on the city. We co-directed. Arms facing down. Lip gloss. Any day now. Motion calibration. You'll just hurt yourself. Schizo skewer married inflation starting stroke canceled vessel Boston legal Boston market lyric salmon Midtown power lunch at 8 p.m. Oh, this is 8 4. This is today 8 4 Midtown power lunch At 8 p.m. Let us get wasted and live like children at the feet of giants. Can taste the ocean and the sushi. School is hell. Work is hell. Life is hell. Love is hell. All right, so that's recent uh, poetry to be included over under video shit. Should I talk for another half hour? I'm kind of ready to be done. I already talked about comet buses or anything other I need to deal with. <laughs> I'd like to get back to just watching TV now, I think. I guess I need to th sort of think out loud about these performances. Mm. That's a good place to stop, I'd say. Thank you for watching. It's a frankly fabulous show. We'll be updating you soon. Goings on. Watch the new episodes. Watch the films. Watch, stay, watch us on MNN, Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Watch us on Brooklyn Free Speech. We're on real TV. We don't need to be on YouTube. Like all these. <laughs> High school children across the country making YouTube videos. TikTok. I guess we need to be on TikTok. King of the micro-influencers, everybody. Frankly Fabulous signing off. Thank you for watching. Good night.